Over the last 10 years, Rick Welch has dominated the 3D archery world with his handmade Dakota bows. 28 world champion titles, over 100 state champion wins, and world record high scores in three different bow divisions highlight Rick's astounding target career. Add to that well over 200 big game archery trophies, and it's easy to see why Rick is considered one of the greatest archers of all time. Let's join Rick on some of his classic hunts as he hunted public land with volunteer cameramen. His main goals on a shoestring budget were to get some video and fill his freezer with meat for his family.
As this 350-pound boar stared Rick down at 33 yards, Rick thought surely he would charge or spook before he could get a shot through the thick brush. That's a heck of a bow hog. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Look at that hair on it, standing straight up on his back still. Look at those teeth. Golly. Oh, oh, Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. God. That <laughs> is a boy. Huh? What a hog. Right there. Right there. Shooter Danny Williams is about to encounter a South Arkansas trophy of a lifetime. In only his second year hunting with a recurve, let's see what happens.
over the top of them limbs. I went right behind the shoulder. I just hope I wasn't low. <laughs> God, dumb. Great. Pull them horns up, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. oh, perfect shot. I thought I was a little bit low, but I wasn't. It was, I waited until he took one more step. He moved that shoulder forward. Right in behind the shoulder. Man. I tell you folks, I was hunting Rick Welch this morning, and he's a true friend. Because this deer, he's been hunting him for three years. He got him in 20 yards of him last year. The cameraman wasn't on him. He had a good kill shot. The camera, cameraman wasn't on him, but hey, I don't know if I could have done it or not, but he didn't take the shot because there wasn't any footage, and that's, that's what he's doing. I see this deer coming, I'm sitting up here, and I'm the shooter. And I said, my God, Rick Welch is right behind me, world-renowned, world championship shooter. And here I am, the shooter, and a Pope and Young is coming oh, out. Oh, man, what a buck. Ten-pointer? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, yeah? A great ten-pointer ten. buck. Set up here on our stand. They call this stand awesome. How cool is that? We're seeing some really good bucks in here. We got bad weather conditions, real windy. We got a cold front pushing in. I don't know how the deer movement's gonna be, but we'll see. It's just got daylight. We're gonna hunt here all day. Hopefully we'll get a shooter in here. I'm pumped. I'm ready. stopped. It's about one o'clock. The weather's changing. The sun's come out. The wind's still gusting up to 40, 50 miles an hour. There's trees falling all around us. We discussed getting down, but we're going to hang in here and hopefully this one won't fall. But anyway, it's getting colder. That wind is getting colder by the minute. It's gonna be tough between now and dark, but uh, hopefully we can hang in here. We've seen a really, really good buck this morning. Then uh, about 1.30 came in. I don't know if we got any footage of him or not, but uh, it's a pretty buck, but I wanna try to get one a little bigger than that if I can.
As Rick admires a nice eight-point buck, he has no idea he's about to encounter the largest buck of his life. With windy conditions, the deer are on high alert, and this world-class trophy is no exception. Stopping at 18 yards, the monster buck knows something isn't right. He's gonna bust us. He came in, he smelled a rat. Tree limb broke over here. He looked this way, I knew he was gonna pick us off. He did. Whew. He had me a little shaky there. Man, I tell you what. I tell you what. If that don't make your heart pump, boom, 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 you're dead. We've been sitting here all day. It's 10 minutes to six. We've been here since daylight this morning. Rode 20 miles from camp in the dark over here, right in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. Set up on this stand called Awesome. Hey, I passed up a heck of a buck this morning. Did you see that? That rascal right there is big. He had brow tines, look like 10, 12 inches. God. Let's get out of this tree. Go try to track him down before dark. We don't have but about 40 minutes. Let's do it. Pass through. Oh yeah. My partner Lance, he hunted in here a couple days ago. He saw this buck and I can't believe he passed him up. He's got a muzzleloader tag and I don't think he knew what he was doing, but good for me, he passed him up and he said, Rick, you can go in there and hunt. And he told me he had real tall brow tines. That's the reason I passed that deer up this morning. And right at six o'clock, buddy, he came in. I got a good hit on him. It's just a matter of finding him now. Let's go do it before it gets dark. Here he is. What a trophy. 14 point. Man, this has been the best hunt I've ever been on. 
This is my biggest buck ever so far. I don't even have a clue what he'll score, but it's gonna be a lot. Man, he's beautiful. This is my first trip to Canada hunt. Man, I tell you what, it's the best hunt I've ever been on. I've seen more bucks hunting in this wilderness. The deer, they act like a deer naturally should, and it has been an awesome hunt. You have to weather some cold weather up here, but hey, it's worth it. That is a trophy of a lifetime for me, I am. It was quite a change from the 12 below zero in Canada to 50 degrees at daylight in Kansas. After five days of hunting, Rick had yet to get a shot at a trophy. in yesterday afternoon where all these bucks came from we're hoping to catch some coming back in here this morning we just saw a good buck right there but couldn't get him to come over here so it's day five we're down to the last day so we're hoping lady luck comes our way so we're gonna need it with this hot weather we're going out here probably to midday if we don't see anything we're gonna try to set up where all of those bucks went into that little narrow finger of woods yesterday afternoon and hopefully catch one this afternoon traveling through there. So that's the game plan for today. Hopefully it'll work. We just gotta stay in here and hope we get lucky. To Rick's surprise, the same eight point that he saw at daylight was coming back at 9 a.m. on a different trail. This time he would pass within range of Rick's recurve. Look 
Well, we watched the video back. It hit him a little far forward from where I was looking, so we're just gonna sit in the stand, give him a while. Uh, I walked up there and looked, there's lots of blood, so we're gonna give him a while before we go look for him. Hopefully we'll find him. After joining the outfitter, Rick decides to stalk the buck to get another shot at 34 yards. He was just sitting there with his head now. Never looked back. I finally got the angle. Got him right there. That's awesome. I couldn't believe it. I watched the whole thing on the He run off. I think we'll just leave him alone. Okay. Just leave him alone and let's let him lay down. Because he ain't going far now. That first one wasn't perfect. But that second one is good right there. Man, I was worried. I was worried with that first shot. I'm just glad we got up on him, got another one in him. We'll get him now. That's all. We'll get him. I can't believe it. That second arrow is right there. And that deer is still going. He just went in a creek right over the hill. There's a, a white bark tree there. I watched him go in down in that creek. Let's not push him anymore. Let's just go back to the lodge and we'll come in here in the morning. <sighs> Crap, another sleepless night for me. Well, we're back over here this morning where uh, we saw the buck go in uh, after I got the second air in him. Uh, we got lucky enough to stalk up within range and got another really hard shot on him. So we're expecting to find him in this draw somewhere this morning. So we're going to slip in and try to pick up where we saw him go in these woods and hopefully we won't have to go far and find that joker, the bionic buck. Amazingly, the guys follow the buck for over a mile, despite having the second arrow in his rib cage. Eric spots the buck running from the draw and confirms that the second arrow is dangling from behind his shoulder.
I, I got barefooted where I could slip, and those guys just fell back and let me stalk him. And he was bedded at the bottom of that big hill. Well, I found that bed. In the creek. And I laid up on top of that hill for a long time, but he was facing me. There wasn't any way. I was just laying there watching him, trying to, I didn't have a shot, too many limbs, and I was trying to figure if I could slip back and go down wind and come back from the turnip patch. Well, the wind swirled one time and blew toward him, and he jumped up and took off across the turnip patch. So I went down that bank, run through that creek and them rocks, and went up the bank. He made it across the turnip patch, and he stopped on the side of that hill. Out in that tall grass? And I moved around. I was directly in line with his butt, and I crawled all the way across that turnip field until I had a hole, and I slid one in right in front of his hip. He just fell over. Oh, he's out in the turnip pot then, above it. He's on that hill, right off the turnip pot. Man, I can't any, believe it. That, you got any thorns in your feet? My feet are, <laughs> they got holes in them. We come, bruised. Lance and Eric and I come through that briar patch you went through. I couldn't believe you even walked through it. They were sticking in my feet. I got thorns stuck in my feet right now. I'm going to have to dig out. That's awesome, buddy. I'm proud of you. Hey, that, that's a bionic buck, buddy. <laughs> that second shot. Is right there, big as my fist. I cannot believe that deer kept going. That's amazing. Right amazing. behind the shoulder, just hammering. That is amazing. It was, it was long you long. know, the deer I took in Canada, 183 inches, I thought, this is a buck of a lifetime. I'll never be prouder of one in that one. But this buck, he made me earn it. And believe it or not, I'm more proud of him than the other deer now. That was... That's awesome. That... That was unbelievable. That's cool, great. man. We got him. Let's go get him. Let's do it. Man, I tell you what, this, this buck right here, I've been bow hunting for many years. And I've never had a deer put me through this. But I'm, I'm wore out my feet from going barefooted for probably three miles, stepping on stops, briars, rocks are just bloody. I got holes all in the bottom of my feet. But uh, when you make a shot on a deer like this, I mean, this is a really nice trophy buck. We came a long ways to hunt this deer and I got an arrow in him and it was my responsibility to, to retrieve him. So I give it everything I had and luckily it was just enough. Uh, when uh, the guide and my cameraman laid back and I went in by myself, I had to belly crawl. I had to do everything imaginable to get up on this deer. And I finally caught him with his rear end straight to me and got the wind right. And I got up probably about 30 yards and put another one in the rib cage. And at that point, he was really weak anyway. And he, he went on and piled up. but. Uh, He's a nice buck. I'm really uh, proud of him, and uh, he'll he'll be special to me always, just because of the experience that I had to go through to get him. And on that shot, uh, you know, there's nobody practices or tries to prepare any more than I do. But uh, you, all of us are human, and you're just not going to be perfect every time. But you owe it to the animal, you owe it to your outfitter, you owe it to yourself in our sport to do everything in your power when you put air in a big buck like this or any kind of animal to retrieve it. And I just feel like uh, I'm blessed to be able to put the stalk on this deer twice and uh, get three arrows in him to finally finish him off. So it's just been an exciting hunt. I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. My partner here, Lance, is going to be hunting, and I'll be the cameraman the rest of the week. And hopefully uh, we can get another nice shooter like this in there and not have so much trouble getting this one.